Well, now, here to discuss the ins and outs of uh, marriage are Harry Benson from the Marriage Foundation, a group that campaigns in favour of marriage. Not surprisingly, Claire Pay, a campaigner for Mothers at Home, at Home Mothers at Home Matter, sorry, Mothers at Home Matter. Uh, Dahlia ben Garim from the left-leaning think tank, the IPPR, and Fiona Miller, a journalist who, for her sins, lives in what used to be called Sin with the Spin Doctor, Alistair Campbell. Now, what business... Can you answer that question that that couple were perplexed by? What business is it of the government whether people are married or not? It's a great question. And, of course, you'd think if, if all relationships were the same, then it, it wouldn't be, make any difference. But the government is deeply involved in family life already. If I took you into a, a, a secondary school and I introduced you to 100 teenagers who are about to start their GCSE exams, of that 100 teenagers, you'd find that 45 of them are not living with both their natural, par uh, natural parents. And that's where the cost of family break breakdown has spiralled out of control. For 25% of kids are now living um, without their natural parents and the state spends an absolute fortune, right. quite rightly, protecting and supporting uh, lone parent families. Fiona um, Miller. Am I supposed to respond to that? Or? Yes. <laughs> well, I think there are the re if you're talking about the reasons children don't achieve, they're very complicated. And I think we, we know there's a correlation, don't we, between... Uh, married couples, couples that stay together and outcomes for children. We don't know that there's a causal link and I think there are a lot of other reasons why children don't achieve and that the state has a, has a business looking into people's or uh, uh, having policy for people's personal lives mm. and family lives but it be, should be to support families in what of, whatever form they come, not simply families so who are in a don't, married don't fetish, couple. Don't fetishise to use the wrong word but, but don't make a big deal of marriage. I think we're talking about is, you're talking about stability and commitment for mm. children and there can be stability and commitment even with a, a couple of parents who separated. Why would you just penalise people who get divorced then? <laughs> the government could find people for getting don't, divorced, couldn't Don't they? you think people are penalised enough when they get divorced? No, let's look at what works. Um, of the 55 kids that I've introduced you to in, in, in Year 9 who are about to start their GCSEs, of those 55 kids whose parents are still intact, 51 out of 55 are married. It's the model that works. And um, gorgeous Fiona here, who's managed to make it work for all these years, is very much the exception. No, if I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's true. But if you're going to make a policy Which based bit's on... Which not true? I don't think I'm the exception, because there are a lot of successful family models that aren't, no. don't involve marriage. And, yeah, okay. and I do think it's about the quality of the relationship rather than necessarily about the status. And we know that, you know, children do well in loving, warm environments, mm -hmm. and that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be married environments. It means that they, you know, you need to support the quality of that relationship and the stability in that household. Um, you know, kids will do much better in a household where it's loving and warming rather than if it's, it's in a married household where the parents are in conflict and arguing all the well, time. What is it specifically about marriage that makes it a better environment to bring up children in? It's the commitment, it's the stability. I think Harry has mentioned the uh, statistics behind it, that you just are more likely to separate if you're cohabiting than if you're married. To get married, at some point you've discussed your long-term future, you've said, I want to marry you. You haven't just ended up living together and then carrying on because nothing else has happened in the meantime. You, you've discussed it, you've committed. And, um, and you are married. But I, sorry, but I do think that, you know, to compare people who are cohabiting to those who are married is, is not a like-for-like -like comparison in a way. Most people now cohabit before they choose to get married, if that's what mm. they choose mm. to decide. And so it's not really comparing like for like. So it, it's kind of unfair to say that those who are cohabiting, you know, have a different range of... The data is more complicated than mm. that, I think. Fiona, I mean, I, tell me to back off if I'm prying here. Okay. But why did you dis make the different decision, which was the decision okay. not to get married? Well, I, I, I've always felt that marriage was a bit of a patriarchal institution. I didn't like that aspect of it. I'm not religious. The ceremony doesn't appeal to me at all. And I mean, it's interesting because since your researcher phoned me up last week to talk about this program, I've thought about the reasons more than I have done in 33 years. I can never think of a good reason to do it. It wasn't there was a reason not to do it, but what was the reason to do it? We had a commitment to each other, we've got three children, you know, we had our ups and downs well chronicled in his diaries, I'm sure many people know about them. Um, but, you know, we stuck together over 33 years, and I think that is a form of commitment and stability. And I, and I frankly, I find it quite offensive to different politicians our form of family life is any less valid than somebody who happens to, you know, have a regular living. Perhaps they're not saying that, perhaps they're merely saying it's slightly more vulnerable. Well, I think if you've got the commitment is there, it doesn't matter whether you're cohabiting or married. And I think you have to look.
at the underlying reasons why people stick together. And I'm not sure that the marriage this is like certainly is a very far There's away a from correlation, but is that the cause? Sure, but you, you are more or less assuming, are you not, that children are better brought up by two parents no, than by one? I'm not at all assuming that. I mean, it's the choice that we have to make, and I think a lot of people do make it, but I think I can think of many successful families that don't have two parents, and the children achieve extremely well. And I think, again, it's, you have to be very, very careful about... ...making these judgments about what is the right type of family model and what is the wrong type of these family These judgments model. do seem to be made all the time. If we were to take your argument seriously, what mechanism do you think should be imposed to try to get people to get married and stay married? Well, I think you can't get away from this basic fact that 51 out of 55 kids in this case are living in intact married families. You know, you've said that. Yeah. Come on, tell us how you think the government could get people to get married and stay married. OK, well, the first thing is that the current government policy actually penalises married couples. And the reason it does that is, is particularly at the low end, is when you're, if you're receiving tax credits, um, if somebody moves in with you, then their income comes into your household and you lose your tax credits. So there, and that's called the couple penalty and it's very, very well known. I spoke to a mate of mine this morning who's happily married and he said he'd already worked out that if his, he and his wife split up, they'd be so much better off um, than, than if they were living together. And that's utterly mad. A marriage tax break would be one of the ways of writing that wrong. Uh, and how much money do you imagine it would take to persuade someone to get married and stay married? Well, I don't know if it's necessarily the amount of money that you need to persuade someone to get married, because well, we give child your benefit. Your is going on about it. Well, we give, we give people child benefit, and it doesn't cause people to have children. We pay pensions, and it doesn't cause people to get old. But So well, giving a marriage tax break would be a good thing, because it's a good thing, because most people who actually make their relationships work um, are married, and the state would then be recognising that. Is there any way of measuring what is the financial inducement that will... where you have a couple who are happily married, who love each other, where they can look after their children the way they want to. So if the mother want, or father wants to stay at home full time, they can. If they, one of them wants to work, they can. And that is a, a fantastic environment to bring children up in, because it's well, stable never, never and loving. It might exist, but most well, of us have to make compromises in life. But I think you can look at what the ideal is and then say, well, how close can we get to that? And I think it doesn't deny the fact it is the ideal. If you can have... A, couple who are happily married, mm. who are committed to the children, who remain committed to the children throughout the children's lives. Do you think that a single parent bringing up a child is necessarily less capable of doing a good job? Not at all. Not so, as you said, many people well, In that people case, why not... worry about it? Because it's, it's great if you can have a father and a mother so you assert. living together. So you assert. Where's the evidence? Because it, when you have parents living together, you, you develop attachment, you develop bonding with the children. I, I have to say, sometimes my husband works away and it's much easier when he's around. The children get a, a balanced approach to being brought up. They have the male version and the female version. And, uh, and that works really well. It's very hard. When What's I'm the like, evidence on this? 
Well, I think families are far more diverse and, and there's a much, mm. you know, I don't think that that's, you know, families thrive in different environments. And I think when people are able to make choices that work for them, mm. that's when kids do really well. That's when you get a loving and supporting home that children and couples or people on their own who make that decision uh, thrive in. But at the moment a lot of families can't make the choices that they want to make because if you um, have a single income family you, you're much more uh, penalised in the tax system. You, single income families uh, pay a much greater proportion of tax than um, dual income families, if you're earning £36,000 as a single income family, you're going to be paying £2,500 more in tax than if you're a dual income family. So actually a lot of people can't afford to stay at home to look after the children or work part time. They, a lot of people do have to work. So, some They're not happy. Couples. Sorry. In some cohabiting couples, people stay at home and look after the children. I think there aren't any hard and fast rules about this. And I think what Claire's trying to say is, that, I mean, I think if, if parents separate, I think it is partly the role of the state to help to support that family, to maintain good relationships with both parents. What we're saying is it's important for children to have a relationship with their both parents if they can do in, the, in those situations. But when, sometimes it's not necessarily the right thing for people to stay together at all. When you look at the growth in divorce and when you look at the growth in cohabiting couples, children born out of wedlock, and the, the fact that there is no longer any kind of stigma really against mm. either divorcees or bastards, there's no stigma uh, that any no. longer that attaches this because, as you say, children see all sorts of models in school. Is this a bad thing? Surely it's a good thing. Well, I, I just want to pick you up, if you'll forgive me, on Please, this, on this business of, of there being more divorce. There isn't more divorce. There hasn't been more There's divorce. There's a lot more divorce than there was in 1950. Uh, well, yes, compared to 1950, but compared to 1980, that's not true. And we've seen, we had a, a one million loan parent families in 1980. There are two million today. And we've ha we have less divorce today than we had in 1980. You have to explain if it's all these background factors no. that are supposedly um, the, the reason why families are splitting up, then you have to explain why family breakdown has doubled. It's the trend away from marriage. That is the reason why we have our 45 out of 100 but, kids but who are living without both natural parents. I mean, one of the fascinating things actually is the success of marriage even now, because when you think that there there isn't any stigma attached to being unmarried. There aren't really the economic reasons for women to have to get married anymore, yes. and yet yeah. so many people are still getting married. I mean, I think you should be celebrating the fact but that it's you, still so popular. You're going with a grain of people. human behaviour. Yeah. You should, we, yeah. Government policy but should go with the grain. don't judge people who don't make that decision. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not at all judging. But I'm just simply that's, saying that's that the way government, the policy, are no, government policy should go with a grain of human behaviour, which is that we want to stay together as couples. Few people set out wanting to be lone parents. We should support lone parents. And we should support but marriage as well. It's stigmatising for lone parents to be told that the married couple model is the best one and the one that works best. If, if you hear it that way, yes. But well, I think actually, a lot of people do hear it that way. I hear it that way. I've been living with the same person for 33 years. I've got three grown-up children. And what I hear is that mm. my, our model of family life and parenting and a relationship is not as good as somebody else's model. Well, That's let me say thing. categorically on behalf of myself and my family, the Marriage Foundation and anyone who represents marriage. I love lone parent families. We should Not support lone, lone parent, parent families. families. <laughs> no, but we should support lone parent families, but we should also support married families as well. You can do both. And, and. unmarried families. No, because this is the model that well, doesn't work. That's the work. problem. No, come on. Uh, OK, if, 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 I, if I told you that my uncle had died aged 90, having smoked 60 fags a day, um, then he's the exception, not the rule. But you I can't go around telling everyone to smoke just because he's done OK. But I think Fiona's done brilliantly, but she is not. The, she is the exception. And lots of marriages but fail I too. Yes, they do, but very, very few, tiny numbers of unmarried couples make it through. If you, it's difficult. Everybody knows it's not difficult. Not tiny numbers. But that's why it's a smaller proportion am. than no, it marriage couples. But the numbers, it's numbers are different to begin with, so you can't compare married yeah. to cohabiting mm. families. And I just think you have to accept, you know, and, and reflect that society is different and there are far more, you know, different family types and, and people are making choices that work for them and it's dynamic. Not everyone will remain in the same um, relationship status throughout. You know, they will change and different environments will work differently. But one of the reasons Fiona's 
here, other than her great contribution, is that we are slightly surprised that someone who's been cohabiting for 33 years is still together. She's, she's making well, a I point. I don't know why you're you know. surprised at all. I mean, no, she's an absolute that, pussycat, really, honestly. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, so knowing her partner as we do. Every single but, um, of it. Th this, is, yeah. this is the point. If you had a married couple who'd been married for 33 years, that would be less significant. But we've looked for someone who has been cohabiting for 33 years and made it. So obviously your model is... Well, all my, is ma all my married friends are now divorced. Uh, oh, right. Choose your friends wisely. You've got to go with the all data. Right. Okay, yeah. thank you all very much indeed. Well, now. Uh,